Good day, my dear exam going students. In order to help you, I thought I would shortly revise hematology. And I have labeled it as RIP, Rapid Revision in Pathology. These are my references. Not necessary that you people will have to go. On the contrary, I would advise you people very much not to change your book. Have a scribble book with you as you follow my class. Write what is missing in the text. Go to rats, again go back to your book. Again I repeat, have your book open when you follow my classes. In fact, I am doing the same thing. There are quite a few books that I got with me. Now this is a one page book that I have written. Or you can go to another book that I like very much was Chalva. So this is over here. That is possible. And third one, of course, all of us know is problems. So any of these books you are advised to have. It can be Harshman, it can be any other text. Please do not change your book. With this small introduction, I shall be starting the classes as such. Now, see the picture. The picture should take you to your book. This is the maturation of the erythrocytic cells. So you have got a pro-erythroblast, then the basophilic, then the polychromatic, orthochromatic erythroblast. You have got the reticulocyte and finally the RBC. This is for a sake of concept. This will not be required for any of the answers whatsoever. On the contrary, this particular diagram is of paramount importance. The bone marrow aspiration. When such a thing is given to you people, you people are supposed to appreciate what will be the instruments that are being used. You have got the different needles which are short and sturdy. They will be having a stillet within it. And these have been described elsewhere in my classes as well as in the class on bone marrow aspiration. The sala has got, remember, the letter L, there is a lateral adjustable guard. And as I told you, there will be a still. And what are the sites of a bone marrow aspiration? The sites are again given in your text. See whether you are able to identify. Anterior superior iliac spine, posterior superior, manubrium sterni, then the vertebra, etc. And when you aspirate, you find that this is the outer table. There is an inner table. And lower down, you find that there is the cortex over here. Obviously, when you pass the outer and the inner table, there will be a sense of giving it. The needle enters the marrow, after which you apply a syringe and then do the aspirate. The aspirate should not be more than 0.2 or 0.3 ml. What are the indications? Again, given in your book, see whether you can find out. The absolute indications for bone marrow aspiration are aplastic anemia, megaloblastic anemia, multiple myeloma, ITP. These are the four absolute indications. The others are all related. So please know, again, why it is important is in these conditions, you will have to write the bone marrow description. It will be asked as a question. So remember those four, others are all relative. It is given in your book. See whether you can find them and note it down. It is a university question by itself. And how do you describe a bone marrow? The contents of it is too much for you for the exam. But this particular pattern, I would like you to follow. The cellularity, the erythropoiesis, 
the leukopoiesis, megakaryopoiesis, lymphocytes, plasma cells, mitosis, what is the differential count, myeloid erythroid ratio, iron scores, any abnormal cell, and finally, a conclusion. This particular pattern for any question on bone marrow, we will follow. Now we go on to the peripheral sphere. A normal peripheral sphere, we people should know. So on the screen, I'm finding a lymphocyte and then the erythrocytes or the RBCs and a few platelets. What is important will be the size of the cell and the central pallor. The central pallor is about one third the diameter and I can compare it with the adjacent area of hemoglobinization. And it is more or less equal to the nucleus of the lymphocyte. So this is a normal peripheral smear. Again, this will not be asked, but have it in mind because you will have to compare it with the others. This is an important slide. What are all the RBC morphological abnormalities? It need not be asked as a question, but it can be asked as an MCQ or on the YOVC, or if you are lucky enough or unlucky, this can be a question by itself. So that can be the macrocytes, microcytes, ellipsocytes, target cells, teardrop cells, sickle cells, acanthocytes, etc. And in this particular one, I given the conditions where it is applicable. So I would like you to kindly have a, an idea about it. And the same thing is repeated over here. What is the morphological abnormality? What are the conditions over here? I would like you to kindly follow it up. Morphological abnormalities of RBCs. Then, inclusions of RBCs. So in which I have got these things. Sometimes whole jolly body can be asked as a question. And any of this can be included in an MCQ. So what are all the various inclusions that we are seeing? And what are the conditions are given over here? The same thing I would like you people to trace in your textbooks and so. For example, Papenheimer bodies is supposed to be classical of sideroblastic anemia. Basophilic stippling, of course, lead poisoning. The general features of anemia. This again is not going to be asked as a question and you people should not be spending too much of your time in writing the general features. But for the sake of completion, there are features of the anemia in general and then there are features of hemolytic anemia. Both are two different things and what are the manifestations you should know. Because in the clinical history, they might give a patient with jaundice or leg ulcers or gallstones. All this indicate to a hemolytic anemia. Whereas pallor, etc. can be deficiency anemia. So this we should do. And again, the description or the definition of anemia don't write simply decrease in hemoglobin. Decrease in hemoglobin and hence the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood specific for the age and sex of the patient. They might ask you during the hemoglobin estimation in the practicals also. So these are some features. These are important because it can be given as a history for you in sickle cell anemia. Also, patient can be having a difficulty in swallowing. So what we call as dysphagia. And this can be a plumber vincent syndrome, classical of iron deficiency anemia. On the contrary, this is a hemolytic anemia. The clinical features are there. The classification of anemia. Whenever I say classification, kindly follow it in your book. Open your book and see what is in the book? If you see the screen, you will forget. Mark it in your book. In the books also, the classification will definitely be given. 
there are two different types of anemias. One I call as nutritional or deficiency anemias. And the second one will be hemolytic anemias. So you will have to mention all these non-hemolytic anemias first. In some books, the hemolytic will be given first. Kindly change the talk. So it can be blood loss, it can be iron deficiency, it can be aplasia, or it can be some other systemic disease causing anemia. This particular classification we must write. Next one will be, of course, your hemolytic anemia. See, so many conditions are there. I would like you people to kindly by heart, there is no other book. So when I say hemolytic anemia, it can be intracorpuscular. That is the defect is within the RPC. Again, it can be membrane defect or hemoglobin defect. These are given in your text. Kindly follow them. On the contrary, there can be hemolysis because of outside agents such as antibodies and because of transfusion, snake bite, etc. Or drugs. So find this out and you will have to buy half the non-hemolytic and the hemolytic causes. If you are a clever student, you will be including the morphological classification also. Morphological means just, it can be a macrocytic, normocytic, microcytic. But this alone is not enough. You will have to write the previous classification, which is of paramount importance. Please trace this in your text. Red cell indices. Again, open your book and mark it. This may or may not be asked as a question, quite rare. But then, any of these parameters can be given. For example, a reduced MCV is classical of ABCD. So you will have to answer. The various things are there, and all are supposed to be red cell indices, except and one can be out. So kindly see the red cell indices. It can be only a short note or definitely MCT. Now I'm starting with the iron deficiency anemia. Define anemia, classify anemia, and then iron deficiency anemia can be the way the essay runs. Or sometimes you can get part of iron deficiency itself as a question. The absorption of iron, you people would have read in your biochemistry, again go back to the text, note it down. So, what is the ferrous and the ferric form or the heme and the non-heme form and how it is being absorbed in the duodenum? What is the role of the hepcidin over here? These are all given and what is the mucosal block theory? Briefly, you people should be able to mention in two, three lines. The diagram is only for completion and you can draw it if time permits. This, of course, is of paramount importance. Now, what are all the features of iron deficiency anemia? Because some of this can be given to us as a clue in the problem-based question. Coelonychia, for example. Patient having a Patterson or a Plummer Vincent syndrome. Of course, pallor, etc. That having been said, this is the peripheral smear. I shall be coming to. What are the relevant investigations? Whenever you people are asked investigations, student write only the peripheral smear or the other investigation. They do not know how to develop the investigations. And these are all things that you people already know. For example, bleeding, you can do an endoscopy. And feces for occult blood, etc. And a complete hemogram can be done. Complete hemogram means all the details of that. RBC, WBC, platelets, etc. And you find that the biochemical tests such as ion binding capacity, serum peritin, etc. These are all the other relevant investigations. Of course, most important will be the peripheral smear, which I am seeing over here. So this, as I told you, is for comparison. 
I am finding the normocyte, and here there are cells with increased amount of fat. There is a variation in size. Everything is given in your text. You people will have to buy hard. Microcytic, hypochromic, and isopyglocytosis. There are some elongated cells, teardrop cells, etc. All this you people will have to buy heart and write. In hematology, peripheral blood smear and bone marrow smear are very, very, very important. In some questions, there will be pathogenesis, as I will be telling you. This particular chart, I would like you people to buy heart because it has got some parameters over here, investigations, and this particular chart can be applicable for iron deficiency, thalassemia, megaloblastic anemia, all of which are definite university questions. Sideroblastic anemia, etc., rarely asked. But then see the number of investigations and the number of questions where they are applicable. So this is a very logical chart which you people must know. If it is not there in your book, this alone you can jot down. This is a megaloblast. We have completed the iron deficiency. What are the causes, etc. You people should be seeing in your text and writing there. Now I'm going to the megaloblast. In this one, what is of great importance will be describing the megaloblast. This I would have done in any of my classes. So I find that there is a large cell with a large nucleus with an open doubt, sieve like chromatin. That is the way you people should describe a megaloblast. And the nuclear maturation lags behind the cytoplasmic maturation. The survival is short in the bone marrow. Therefore, the patient develops an anemia. So this is the introductory part of it, which you people must be knowing. This, of course, is of importance. Whenever the question is megaloblastic anemia, it can be B12 deficiency, it can be folic acid deficiency, or it can be a pernicious anemia, Addisonian pernicious anemia. So any of the three, students get confused. But the question, the answer is the same for B12 deficiency. This is the mode of absorption. Now, look at this particular picture. It is applicable for B12 deficiency. And this is the normal function of the B12. So find out a similar diagram in your text. I'm not going to explain it. So you find out. So you find that there is the B12 part of the food and then there is an the intrinsic factor combining with B12 and it gets carried, goes to the ileal receptor, etc. And finally, it is transmitted by means of the transfer volume. So this particular diagram and the description, you people will have to buy heart and draw for a question on megaloblastic anemia. So this is important particularly B12 deficiency. This is even more important. So look at this one. What is the ultimate function of B12 or folic acid? It is the formation of the DNA. So here there is one step. Homocystin to methionine and the B12 is there. And the Methylene tetrahydrofolic acid is converted to tetrahydrofolic acid. B12 is helping in the folic acid metabolism. And afterwards, it is the folic acid metabolism. Progressively, there is the maturation of the DNA. Now, when there is going to be a defect in either this B12 or the folic acid, you find that there is an interruption in the DNA synthesis and it is lagging B. So this description, you people should read from your book. Draw this diagram, 200% definite. And the causes, there are some causes that are given. Again, go to your book, there will be a tabular column. Kindly see that it is being written. What are all the causes? There will be various causes like pregnancy, 
malabsorption, and even a pernicious anemia. Defect in the intrinsic factor. And folic acid deficiency. What can be the various causes? Because MCQs can be asked. Pentaton sodium is associated with B12 deficiency, folic acid deficiency, iron deficiency, etc. Typically, you find that it will be associated with folic acid deficiency. So anticonvulsants are folic acid deficiency. So look at the way the questions can be asked. Sometimes there can be parasites, the fish tapeworm or the typhilobotrium later. So this is usually asked as a question. Blind loop syndrome, which leads to bacterial woe. So that is the way you people should buy heart and apply. When you know that is an MCQ, definitely your mind will be able to accept it. Again, coming to the peripheral blood smear. We have seen the peripheral blood smear and iron deficiency. Now it is megaloblastic anemia. So in this case, two things are very important. The RBCs are large. Not only are they large, they are somewhat oval in outline or ovoid. They are called as macro ovalocytes. Definite point. The RBCs contain inclusions such as the Howard Jolly bodies. And the peripheral blood, the neutrophils show multiple segments, more than five segments, called as hypersegmented neutrophils. So you will have to describe this in the peripheral blood smear. Go back and read. Whenever you write an answer on the peripheral blood smear, RBCs are macrocytic with moderate to severe anisopoiclocytosis. Macro ovalocytes, owl jolly bodies, cabo rings can be seen. WBCs, the neutrophils show hypersegmentation. Platelets are normal or slightly reduced. In fact, the patient can be having a pancytopenia because it is a bone marrow disorder. Mild jaundice can be there because of hemolysis. Mild, it will be very mild, but it comes under nutritional deficiencies. And this is the bone marrow. I told you, I gave you a picture of the bone marrow initially. Go back to it. What are all the components? And you will have to describe it. When a bone marrow and for megaloblastic anemia, bone marrow will form the stem of your answer. So you will have to describe the suppressed erythropoiesis. It shows a megaloblastic pattern of maturation. Large cell. So compare with this one, this is very huge. The nucleus is large. The chromatin is open. The nuclear maturation lags behind the cytoplasmic maturation. Giant stab forms can be seen. And you find that there can be hyper or hypolobated megakaryocytes also. So all the lineages will be affected. This you people will have to describe. Bone marrow. All the other things will be more or less normal, but read from your text. And as per the subheadings given initially, you people will have to frame your answer. Always there will be other investigations. So in this one, I'm finding the Schilling's test. See this one, it can be asked as an independent question or it can be general. So I would like you people to kindly make a list of the other investigations. So you must write peripheral smear, hemogram, bone marrow, other investigations. And in the other, you find that the serum B12, etc., all will be given. So you will have to make a mention of it and describe the shillings test. I will not be wasting time going into it. It is your duty to read this up. This is another question called spherocytosis. Surprisingly, the students wrote this answer extremely well. This was asked as an essay question. Do not be selective. Iron is an essay question. B12 is or megaloblastic is an essay question. Pernicious is an essay question. And 
you have got spherocytosis as an essay. This is the peripheral blood in which I am finding small cells. They hardly have got any amount of pallor. There is no pallor, small brown cells. So this is the spherocyte. It is a hemolytic anemia. Therefore, the bone marrow produces immature cells called polychromatic cells or reticulocytes. This is what we see in the peripheral blood. The pathogenesis of spherocytosis will be important. So you find that there is an abnormality in the red cell membrane. The spherocyte is supposed to be the smallest cell. Why? Because every time there is some stasis, part of this abnormal cell membrane is being pinched off and it is being engulfed by the macrophage. Therefore, the cell becomes smaller and smaller and ultimately it becomes a spherocyte. So this part of it, find in your book, you people will have to explain. And the structure of the red cell membrane Definitely, you people will have to like. So, there is the red cell membrane, and what is the glycophorin over here, and the spectrin, actin, etc., are there, so which form the skeleton. This is maintaining the shape of the RBC. So, when there is a disorder in this, there can be a spherocytosis. So, definitely, you people will have to mention this one. And this kind of a diagram is easier to do. Lipid bilayer, the band 3, ancarin, spectrin, 4.2, 4.1, etc. This is a more classical one. I would like you people to kindly observe this one. So, you find that this is the bilobe or the biconcave. RBC. And what happens is part of it is being released as microvesicles they are being lost. As a result of which the cell becomes smaller and smaller and it becomes a spleen. After which it undergoes a trapping in the spleen it and it becomes destroyed. There is a hemolysis. So the pathogenesis these two diagrams are important. Not the peripheral blood, not the bone marrow. The bone marrow is usually not done for spherocytosis. On the contrary, there can be some important investigations such as this. So you have got the osmotic fragility test, the series of tubes with saline, the normal blood is put and also the patient's blood for comparison. You find that in the early concentration itself, hemolysis starts. Whereas in a normal patient or normal sample, it takes like This will be the osmotic fragility. Rarely this can be asked as a question, but definitely nothing wrong in asking. Osmotic fragility is classically done for A, B, C, D. So I would like you people to kindly relax, recharge and exhale because we have to continue with RBC.